Hi everybody. In this video you will learn how the horizontal transformations of a sinusoidal function affect its properties. I have set up the graphing application to graph y equals sine b times x minus c where b equals 1 and c equals 0 to start with. That means that the pink curve that you see in front of you is the graph of y equals sine x. Now by adjusting the b value you can see that the graph undergoes a horizontal stretch about the y-axis. Now recall from your previous studies that this type of transformation can be carried out by multiplying all of the x-coordinates on the curve by the horizontal stretch factor, which is generally 1 over b, or in the example before you, 1 over 2. Now when I graph this function y equals sine 2x, we have taken each of the x-coordinates, multiply them by half. Notice that the period of the function is now just pi. Okay, so before, if you look at the pink graph, I can complete one cycle only between 0 and 2 pi, but now the blue graph is the transformation. It is the graph of y equals sine 2x, and I can fit one cycle in between 0 or on the interval between 0 and pi. So that means the period, which is the width of one cycle, is now just pi, or half of what it was before. What you need to know is that the b value affects the period of the graph, but please don't interpret the b value itself as the period. Right? The b value is 2, but the period of this graph is pi. So if b doesn't represent the period, what does the b value represent? Well, you can see that you can fit two full cycles of sine 2x on the interval between 0 and 2 pi. Now, what if we graphed sine 3x? So for sine 3x, we're horizontally stretching uh, the original graph by a factor of a third. And now you can see that you can fit exactly three cycles on the interval between 0 and 2 pi. Let's try one more example. If we graphed y equals sine half x, now what we can get is we can only get half of a cycle on the interval between 0 and 2 pi. So the b value does have meaning. It really tells us how many cycles of the graph can fit in an interval of length 2 pi. When the b value is negative, notice that there is a reflection in the y-axis. This does not affect how we talk about the period though, since the period cannot be negative. Okay, now let's move on to a discussion of the c value. You can see that the c value in the equation controls the horizontal translation that is applied to the curve. A positive c translates the graph uh, to the right, and a negative c translates the graph to the left. Now, in case you're not quite sure about that, take a look at the way that the equation is set up. When c is a positive value, what you would see here is, for example, x minus a positive 2. So you would see x minus 2. And from your previous studies of transformations, you know that when you see x minus 2, that represents a horizontal translation two units to the right, right? Whereas if c was negative, say negative 2, then you would see x minus negative 2. Now x minus negative 2 turns out to be x plus 2, which again you would understand as meaning uh, two units to the left. Uh, one thing that, uh, that we should note when we're talking about uh, sinusoidal functions is uh, horizontal translations uh, is uh, an expression that is going to be replaced with horizontal phase shift or just simply phase shift. So when you're referring to horizontal translations as it relates to sinusoidal functions, they're now known as phase shifts. Uh, one thing also to note is that any way you slice the b and c values, the domain of a sinusoidal function will always consist of all the real numbers. Although I guess there's one exception, if b is equal to zero, then yes, you do have an L, you do have a domain that's all the reals, but you don't have a sinusoidal function anymore because it's just a flat line. In the last part of this video, let's take a quick look at how these same transformations affect the graph of y equals cosine x. So here's the graph of y equals cosine x, which is different from y equals sine x in the fact that uh, at the y-axis, uh, cosine x starts at a maximum value of one. Again, adjusting the b value. Um, affects the or leads to a horizontal transformation where 1 over b corresponds to the horizontal stretch factor and again b itself corresponds to the number of cycles that can fit on the interval between 0 and 2 pi so again b is equal to 2 
So from 0 to 2 pi, I can fit one cycle and another cycle, two cycles of cosine 2x. And we also see that the c value represents the horizontal translation or phase shift of the curve, either to the left when c is negative or to the right when c is positive.